Marrying more than one brother was the norm. What constitutes marriage in ancient India? Greetings. Today we're going to talk about how the relationship between a man and a woman developed in ancient India. Why parents did not rejoice at the birth of a girl. What fate awaited the Indian woman who lost her husband? Is it true that polygamy was common in ancient India and women could marry several brothers at the same time? Be sure to watch the video to the very end so that you don't miss the slutty details. It will be very interesting and informative. Attitude of ancient Indians to women. You probably know that the ancient Indian civilization is considered one of the most mysterious in the history of mankind. And this is really true. Indians have quite a specific attitude to marriage and family relations. But the most striking is the idea of the inhabitants of India about the female part of the population. Let's first analyze the attitude of Indians to the female sex, and then we will move on to the peculiarities of marriage and family relations. The first thing to pay attention to is how parents treated the birth of girls in the ancient Indian family. If the representatives of other nations, as a rule, rejoiced at the birth of children, regardless of the sex of the child, the Indians were sad about it, and all because the birth of girls was considered a punishment for sins in the past life. Based on all of the above, it follows that it was the inhabitants of ancient India considered women to be slaves. And in order to rid a girl of the sins she committed in the past, it was necessary to marry the last one and as soon as possible. That's why girls became full wives at an early age. To make you understand, history knows cases when children were married off at the age of 10, 8 and even 6. But later, at a young age and older, Indian women became real goddesses. They carefully took care of their husbands, followed family traditions and left behind future heirs. By the way, it was from an early age girls were taught to curb feelings, but what if an Indian woman, for one reason or another, did not manage to marry? Here begins the most interesting thing. In this case, one of three outcomes is possible. First, the woman remained a slave of God forever. This is how the ancient Indians imagined female representatives of the female sex. The status of a slave was assigned from birth and lasted until the end of life. Secondly, an unmarried woman could become a courtesan. In this case, we are talking about the whole art form of ancient India. And all courtesans were assigned a certain status depending on the location in the social hierarchy. For example, the ancient Indian woman could not make love to men below her status. But courtesans of higher statuses could pay with their lives if they violated this or that prohibition. Also, girls and women of ancient India in the role of courtesans were considered the embodiment of goddesses. And to protect themselves from demons and other evil, they wore clothes with decorations of red colour. Thirdly, many female representatives went to harems, where they spent the rest of their days. In this case, they were called concubines. In addition to India, harems were spread in other eastern countries. It is interesting to note that the number of concubines in one of the Indian harems was about 16,000. Marriage between a man and a woman in ancient India. Now get ready. This is the moment to finally understand all the intricacies of the marriage union between spouses in ancient India. Well, let's begin. The main feature of marriage was that a woman obeyed her husband unconditionally. As you remember, future wives were given in marriage quite early. It is quite logical to assume that the age difference between the spouses was significant. That is why the spouse was considered the main in the ancient Indian family. Both age and status allowed. Then throughout the family life, the wife carefully took care of her man. It was she who ensured the cleanliness of the man's body, regularly washed his feet, addressed her husband by you in the process of communication and was not even allowed to look him in the face. It was also not allowed to call the spouse by name. Otherwise, according to Indian beliefs, it could reduce the life expectancy of a man. During a meal, 
in accordance with ancient Indian traditions, it was allowed to eat only after the husband. And when the spouses went outside, the woman did not walk next to the man as it may seem at first glance. She walked a few steps behind. As for the wedding night, the inhabitants of ancient India adhered to the following concept. They believed that the night spent between spouses has a sacred meaning. That is, it is not just a physical pleasure, but also an opportunity to approach a completely different world, where spirituality and divinity reign. After the birth of children, a woman in the role of mother began to personify a real goddess. Even in the divine hierarchy, she occupied a place of honour. According to the laws of ancient India, mothers were considered 1,000 times higher than fathers because they brought up the souls of the born. Later, it was forbidden to quarrel with mothers and leave them to their fate. Otherwise, the guilty could be punished to the full extent of the law and even imposed a heavy fine. We pay special attention to the way the Indian woman protected her husband. This is due to the fact that after the departure of the latter into the next world, nothing good was foreseen. Henceforth, the widow was considered a sinner and a disgrace. In addition, a woman could never marry again. Many restrictions were imposed on the Indian woman. She could not wear gold, the widow slept on the bare ground, ate the usual foods only once a day. The only way was to observe all sorts of fasts, but most of all, Indian widows feared the same fate that awaited their spouses. The sati procedure was common in that era. To give you an idea, it's a ritual burning. Fortunately, it did not happen that often, and the ritual was performed on women who belonged to the aristocracy. Polygamy in ancient India. Historically, Indian women could have multiple spouses. Equally, Indian men could marry more than one wife. But there is one important detail and we will just tell about it. Regarding polygamy, it should be noted that a man often had several brothers in his family. A natural question arises, what should a woman who plans to marry this man do? The Indians found the only solution and put it into practice. In this case, the woman would marry all her brothers, which by the way, became her full-fledged spouses and the children born from this or that man were considered common for all spouses, but already in the role of fathers. Men could also have several wives. Polygamy in ancient India was due to the unlimited rights and freedoms of the male population of the country. This was especially the case in Indian harems, when the Sultan had several wives on an official level. Eventually, the ancient Indian inhabitants put into practice up to eight varieties of marriage unions, each of them is unique in its own way. Nevertheless, the goal of each of them is to create harmonious relations in the family, to follow traditions and to fully educate future heirs.